Welcome to Nightmares and Grief, a place to explore and celebrate the darkness. Each episode, I'll read stories written by me, Derek Heisey. So settle in, check under the bed, and pour a drink for the skeletons in your closet. It's time to start. Spores. There's not much worse than people. They let you down and take advantage of you. They expect you to do things that you don't want to do and then never reciprocate. Worse than that, even the best-intentioned people get you sick. See, I'm one of those guys who still wears a mask all the time. A real mask, not some cloth bullshit with Cookie Monster on the front. I sanitize it every night. I don't bother with colors or fancy patterns or anything. It's not like anyone sees them. I haven't even left the apartment since 2020. How could I? How can any of you? Are you stupid? That shit is out there waiting. Do you want to die? Mm Mm-mm. Nah, not me. I'm not about that. The pandemic gave us an opportunity to rebuild the world, and we couldn't wait to go back. Why? Why would you do that to yourself? Did you really love your office 9 to 5 making trips to Walmart on the way home, wondering if you should buy generic because you're saving for, what, a Subaru? Fuck that. Fuck that. I was ready to give up on the whole everything a long time ago, and the pandemic gave me an out. I code from home, order everything online, and wear my mask whenever I open the door. Call me crazy. Go ahead. Eccentricity is a great shield against human interaction. And you know, to get even weirder, I got into plants. I started with a a cheap spider plant just before lockdown. It's, It's like I knew things were going to shit. Do you remember what it was like? Starting Christmas 2019, it was like some weird haze hung over everything. This thick tension, gray like smoked glass. There was a sense that something wasn't right. You remember Soleimani? We thought World War III was on the horizon. Anyway, I figured the spider plant wasn't enough, so I got an aloe, then a juvenile rubber tree, and then a string of dolphins that I hung from the ceiling. For symmetry's sake, I wanted another trailing plant for the other side of the window, so I got a silver inch. By the time the murder hornet swept in, I had a full plant stand blocking every window, and green foliage nestled into every corner. By the Ebola outbreak in the Congo, I had no more space to put plants. After the 12th Green Depot package, the delivery guy, he tried starting a conversation about them, but I didn't answer. He might have it. I spied him through the peephole as he lingered, his face all lined with grief and weariness. I waited until he vanished into the elevator and then counted to ten before opening the door. See, whenever I pop out for deliveries, I always wear disposable gloves and arm myself with a can of Lysol. I spray the shit out of the delivery, the floor around it, and then the exterior side of the door, and I followed the same procedure when I ordered the block. See, after filling my apartment with houseplants, I decided it was time to expand my interests. I experimented with tomatoes and peppers and a small hydroponic rig, and it was so successful that I upgraded to a floor-to-ceiling model. It made me wonder if it was possible to grow all the food I needed in my apartment. This brief fantasy flashed before my eyes in which I didn't need people at all anymore. So I ordered an inoculated block of mushroom substrate. 
And when it arrived, I did everything right. I waited for the delivery guy to leave. I counted to ten, put on my gloves, and sprayed everything. When the box was inside, I scrubbed it down with Clorox wipes and let it air dry. I already had a space on my coffee table for it. I cut a slit across the cloth patch on the plastic bag and then misted water into the sawdust block inside. It was hard to sleep that night. I dreamt of mushroom burgers. The next morning, snowy white mycelium covered the brown substrate block. It was supposed to take a whole week to form, but I was so excited that I didn't question it. I coated on the couch that day, and I swear, every time I looked at the block, I saw it change. Tiny brown pins sprang up around the mycelium by lunch. By dinner, little fungal stalks had risen out of the block like spears. I'd taken to misting the slit in the bag every hour because the block drained every drop of moisture almost as soon as I sprayed it. It was the thirstiest thing I'd ever seen. I, I worried about how it would do in the night without my attention, so I set a few alarms. I woke up every three hours to spray it. By three in the morning, the bag was full of hundreds of pale green shrooms like closed-up doll umbrellas. By six, they pushed through the slit, stretching it past its limits, and not even an hour later, they opened before my eyes. It's the kind of thing you see on YouTube time lapses, but here it was, right in front of me, the pale green mushroom heads yawning open like they'd just woken up from a deep sleep. The caps expanded so fast that their bioluminescent yellow gills seemed to breathe. And they were strong, let me tell you. The caps pushed against the plastic bag, first forcing a little tear, but then they were emerging through dozens of gaping holes. I almost wish I had someone to text. I wanted to share. Next morning, I woke up tingling all over like I, I had a rash. Deep, harsh coughs tore across my lungs and shredded my throat. The air was swampy and it coated my mouth and throat with what felt like a fine layer of ash. I groped for the mask beside my bed. My apartment was so humid, I might as well have been swimming. I stomped to the bedroom door, wondering if someone's sink had flooded from a grease clog again. But something made me stop. Smoke poured from beneath the door. Yellow light danced in the aqueous tendrils. I flung the door open and shambled into the living room, breathing in a fine gray cloud. The air was like water. A fungal cathedral towered above me. Mycelium strings spilled over the edges and down the legs, burrowing into the carpet. Beneath the caps, glowing gills throbbed with a yellow pulse. They were everywhere. Sprouting out of the couch, ringing around the carpet, and exploding from the walls in these cancerous clusters, green mushrooms illuminated my whole apartment with a sickly light, and they breathed. With every pulse of their gills, the mushrooms exhaled fine gray mist. Spores not smoke. I'd been inhaling innumerable trillions of fungal spores. I, I scratched my leg and this terrible thought dawned on me. I, I ran to the bathroom and pulled down my pajama pants. White, web-like tendrils crept across my skin, 
conquering my body centimeter by centimeter. When I looked closer, I could make out little brown spots. I was pinning. It only took a few hours for the mushrooms to fruit. They start on my thighs and belly, rising out of the flesh like discolored skin tags, but soon they crowded my face until I peered between musky prison bars. It wouldn't be long now. I went to the window, and I opened it. I went to the door, and I opened it too. The thin, gray spore cloud oozed out of my apartment and into the world. Then I went back to the couch and snapped a mushroom off my face to inspect it. It's better this way, I guess. Maybe this time things will change. Thank you for sharing my nightmares and helping me carry the grief. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You can find more stories at nightmaresandgrief.com. Thanks again for listening. Peace. Thank you.